Hello and welcome back to part 2 of section 5.4. Today we're going to continue on with the sum and difference formulas. And we're actually going to begin with example 5, which says to prove the co-function identity, the sine of the quantity x minus pi over 2 is equal to a negative cosine of x. Well, using our uh, difference formula for sine, we are actually going to rewrite this as the sine of x times the cosine of pi over 2 minus the cosine of x times the sine of pi over 2. And when we simplify this, you'll see that we end up with a sine of x, and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, minus cosine of x, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So when we simplify this, this whole thing here will become 0, and cosine x times 1 is cosine x, and we have this negative, so this is going to give us a negative cosine of x. Example 6 is similar to example 5, however now we're going to simplify the sine of 3 pi over 2 minus theta, and when we do that, we end up with the sine of 3 pi divided by 2 times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of 3 pi over 2 times the sine of theta. So again, when we simplify, we have a negative 1 times the cosine of theta minus 0 times the sine of theta. This will give us a negative cosine theta minus 0, which is a negative cosine of theta. Now with tangent, we're going to substitute our, or use our tangent formula, and we're given that we have tan theta minus the tangent of pi over 4 divided by 1 plus the tangent of theta times the tangent of pi over 4. So again, when we reduce this down, we're left with the tangent of theta minus the tangent of pi over 4 is really 1, and we're going to divide that by 1 plus tan theta, and we said the tangent of pi over 4 was 1. So this right here then is going to be our final answer. Example 7 says to find all solutions of the sine of the quantity of x plus pi over 2 plus the sine of x minus 3 pi over 2 equals 1. And we want to do this on the interval, and I did leave this out, from 0 to 2 pi. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to distribute or apply the appropriate formulas with our addition and subtraction. So when we do that, what we get, and I'm going to move this one over to the left, we get 1 equals the sine of x times the cosine of pi over 2 plus the cosine of x times the sine of pi over 2. And we're going to add that to the sine of x times the cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus the cosine of x times the sine of 3 pi over 2. And now I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So I have 1 equals sine x times 0 plus cosine x times 1 plus sine x times 0 minus cosine x times a negative 1. Well, when I do that, this term here is going to cancel, and this term here is going to cancel. So I have 1 equals the cosine of x minus a negative 1 times cosine, which gives me plus cosine x. So this tells me that I have 1 is equal to 2 cosine x. So now when I go to solve this, I have 1 half equals the cosine of x, 
And if we think back to our unit circle, there's two places between 0 and 2 pi where cosine x equals 1 half. That's going to occur in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4. Well, the quadrant 1 value is going to be pi over 3, and the quadrant 4 value will be 5 pi over 3. So to solve this, x is going to equal pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And these are our two solutions. And the very last example that we're going to do uh, today says to verify that the cosine of the quantity of x plus h minus the cosine of x divided by h is equal to the cosine of x times cosine h minus 1 divided by h minus sine x of, or times sine of h divided by h. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by looking at this side right here, and I'm going to apply my um, summation formula of cosine and go from there. So when I distribute that, I end up with the cosine of x times the cosine of h minus sine x times sine h. So that's my actual formula. Then I'm still going to be subtracting this cosine x right there. And I'm going to divide all of this by h. So when I simplify, I am going to bring together my cosine terms. So in other words, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this cosine term here right here. So I'm re really rearranging. So this gives me the cosine of x times the cosine of h minus the cosine of x minus sine x sine h and all of this is being divided by h. Well from here because I'm dividing by a single variable h I can actually break this up and it's going to benefit me to kind of break this up right here. So by doing that I now can look at these two terms well let's let's factor it out first or break it up first. This is going to give me the cosine of x times the cosine of h minus the cosine of x divided by h. And then I have minus the sine of x times the sine of h divided by h. So now I see from each piece that I'm going to factor out my common factor and in this case my common factor on the left is going to be cosine x and I'm left with a cosine of h minus 1 divided by h minus and if I take the sine x out then I have sine h divided by h and I can actually take this out here because when you're multiplying it doesn't really matter. And by doing that, um, if we scroll up, um, you'll see that this right here is the exact same thing that we have right there. So now we're done. And we, are, we have now completed section 5.4. So on that note, have a good night and I'll see you in class tomorrow.